does he come and tell you this, or this is the writers? Again? Bruce Pritchard. Uh huh. Oh, uh, Green Bay, my hometown. Yes, that's right. Uh, which makes it even more awesome. Um, Bruce Pritchard comes up to me. I need your cell phone. You're out of your mind. I need your phone, Dylan. Okay. There you go. You're gonna be Vince's son. Okay. Can I have that back? No. He just wanted you to tell anyone. Yep. No one knew. Bruce knew. Vince knew. Kevin Dunn knew. Hunter knew. That's the. That's all that knew about it. <laughs> Legitimately, all that knew. Um, they were doing a rehearsal in the ring. For it, for like the segment. Uh, I was down to like Hunter and three other guys, and then I said, "All right, rehearsal's done." Right. Bruce said, "I'm gonna get your bag. Tell me what it looks like. I'm gonna go get your bag in the locker room. You get under that ring without anyone noticing you." This is like 4:30 in the afternoon. I said, "Let me leave comp tickets for my family. Give me their names. They'll be there." I said, "Can I please text them to come to the show? Because I wasn't gonna be used. I just wanted, you know, for this." Right. He goes, "All right." Let me see what you, and I, all, I, all I was texted was, hey, I'm doing something big tonight. Please come. Tickets will be under your name. That's all I could say. They came. Um, and then so I go under the ring at 4.30, and it's like, headset. Dylan, are you under there? This is God, Vince. Yeah. All right. It's going to be a while, but I promise I'll touch base with you soon. Okay. Because they didn't want any of the production truck knowing, no camera guys, because they're all on the headset too. So it's one of these things like, oh Jesus. What would the harm have been of them knowing you're at the venue because you're there? No, anyway. it wasn't that. Knowing I'm under the ring, no one saw me go under there for rehearsals. No one saw my name brought up for one of the, the not the sun. The right, so there would have been no reason for you to be under the ring other than that, because you're not on a match list. Yep. Jesus, but just for you, I would have put a fucking fake match on there with you so you didn't have to sit on the ring for two hours. Oh, I was used That's to, I was used to that. Considerate. I would go out for overseas shows. I would go over before Can you doors. bring music, a book? Like... I would bring my PSP. All right. Yep, yeah, I'd bring my PSP under there. I would, like, for, like, if we do, like, an overseas show, like Mexico and that, I would go under the ring before people came in mm. for the main event match. So, doors open. That's an hour. Maybe an hour and a half. Then the whole show. First half. Intermission, second half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so he tells you, just chill. We'll get in touch with you. So mm -hmm. now he comes back on, I guess. Comes back on. Um, so I had the Cruiserweight title at the time. And my biggest thing was like, do I bring this out? Do I wear it? Do I wear it? And I go, Vince, uh, excuse me, Vince? Excuse me, Vince. Kevin Dunn comes that headset. Dylan, um, you got to be quiet, man. You gotta, we'll, we'll be with you in a second. And I didn't want to even want to answer back. Mm -hmm. Dylan, did you hear me? Do I answer or what? I just put, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, fuck. Yeah, Dylan, what, what do you need? What do you need? Uh, should I wear my, the title out there? Great question. Um, yeah, you might as well. Yeah, wear it. It's fine because we're going to bring it up in one of the segments about being a champion. Whew, thank you. At least I asked. Especially because I didn't know I was being brought up mm. in one of the like the clues of he's a champion. So it right. makes sense for me to wear it out there. Um, one of the highlights is they had to literally kick Sandman out of the ring because every clue worked for Sandman. Right. So the last two were Sandman and Hunter, right. and they had to pull like, a, like an audible. And save something just to get Sandman out of the ring. Because he wasn't leaving. Right. It's awesome. Awesome. Right. It was um, supposed to be Ken. Supposed to be? Ken. Kennedy. Right. Guaranteed. I was going to ask you about that. Guaranteed. Um, now tell me how things changed for you right after this. I mean, it's you're going from being on TV and working to being in one of the more, most talked about angles in the company yeah, at the time. Yeah, that's the one that defined my... Career, like we, it's like WLC and Vince's son, and mm -hmm. Cruiserweight right after. But it uh, 
crazy thing was I was used to working SmackDowns. Now it's Raw every week. Right. And, and SmackDown every week. Right. So it's even more work. Which is good. It's great. Okay. Especially being on Raw. Um, I main evented Raw in that segment and in a lot of segments. Are you getting more money? I main evented Raw. I, I, listen, listen, <laughs> Bruce. No, it, 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 you know, it. More work is always more money. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if the if it was kind of a flat. I, mean, I got my guarantee, but more work is always more. You always want to work more because you can possibly earn more right. money. All right. Uh, now you're working with Vince every week, a couple of times a week. Um, stressful? No. No. I was so intimidated. I. I, that's like one of my regrets is I never picked his brain. I just even one random question a week would have been like awesome. Right. I never did that, and I really feel like I really wish I would have. Did he? Um... He picked on Coach a lot, which I'm sure we'll get into. He always picked on Coachman, just like little things. Oh, you look like shit. The tie. What the what the hell's wrong with that tie? Joking. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, what kind of conversation are you having with Vince? <laughs> None. <laughs> Like no, like uh, you know, the game the other night, like in between. Oh no. no, he doesn't no, watch games. No, he's not human at all, right? He's human, barely. He has a pulse. Right, in between seeing the wrestlers' children, he is human still. Yeah, yeah. Um, take me through the process with Vince. He comes in, he's going to tell you what we're going to do tonight, or you're still, there's a writer there no, with there's you No, there's Vince. a writer. There's a writer. Um, obviously, Vince knows because of the, the production meeting. Right. So Vince kind of knows what we're going to do, but the writer will then kind of refresh him because he's, I mean, he's working raw. He's in mm -hmm. the gorilla. Or he's coming back from a meeting and, all right, what are we doing? Okay, we're doing this. Great. The writer would say this. This is this. This is this. This is the blocking. I will say about Vince, the cool, the, the cool thing was, and it, it kind of, you know, it could get annoying to some or piss some off, but it had to be perfect. It had to be exactly what he wanted. Littlest thing, like body position. All right, let's do it again. All right, let's do it again. Mm. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. What was the most salty thing you heard him say to someone on the production staff? There was a day where it was me, him, and Coach doing a backstage. And he goes, do you need a mint? Coach goes, no. I think you should take one. He just saw Coach like just deflated. And I, was, I felt bad for him. I was like, oh, God. You just got told you need a mint by the boss. That's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, it was... He, he never he, called someone a useless cocksucker because he left the cable in the wrong place. Uh, no. Oh, all right. I was hoping to get something like that. No. Um, if, he, like, if he took a bump over it, I'm sure he would have been pissed. <laughs> I remember this Raw. I was on four segments. I was this, uh, two backstages, no, this, a backstage, Kali and with Hogan, with Hogan, and then uh, Austin Beer Bash. I remember asking the writer, where's Linda? And the writer going, for the photo, for the family photo. And the writer kind of going, yeah, she's, uh, she's not going to be here. She was doing her political stuff. Right, okay. Separation. Yeah. But it was one of those, ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't have asked that kind of thing. Um, those Dylan moments. Yeah, <laughs> there was many of them. <laughs> but no, it it was great. It was so much fun. I, Sunny loved me. Did she love you? She loved me. Not. Loved you. Uh, it wasn't sunny days for me. No. But I remember I go up to her. Oh, it's so good to meet you finally. You are one of the only reasons I watch a show. I love what you're doing. This is a broad where I love. My first little was probably to her. Mm -hmm. And so it was great. Like, I, I loved it. I talked to her all day. It was awesome. Got her phone number. 
went back home. I have Sonny's goddamn phone number, guys. Fuck you. Bet you it is. Return message. Told ya. But it was fun. It was, it was, um, she was in really good spirits. It was. Those were good it days. It was good days for Sonny. It was good days. Um, Hogan. That's a big one. Talk yeah. about working with the big guy. The number one, not my number one. I was never a Hogan guy. Was well, a he was guy. the number he, one. Austin was number one. Yeah, we could have this debate too, but talk about working with Hulk Hogan. I just wanted him to rip, him to rip his goddamn shirt and he wouldn't. That's all I wanted. All I wanted was, because I knew he was going to save me, we were going to do a pose down. Mm -hmm. I say to the writer, we're going to rip our shirts right. He goes, no. Hogan says no. No, the writer. Oh. No. I go, why? Hulk's not feeling it. No. Doesn't work for him, brother. He shows up and he's in like this under muscle, like this under armor, sleeveless, looking kind of old. Yeah. I was like, uh, Wouldn't have had the same effect. Yeah. 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 Side tits out and stuff. Um, so I go, we're going over the rehearsal. Oh, yeah, and then I'm gonna rip my shirt, and you know, you, we can both do it. He goes, "Not tonight, brother." I look at Vince, and Vince just goes, "I go, shit, I really am not gonna do this." But I still got to pose with Hogan in the middle of the yeah. ring. Awesome. You were told by a writer. Why did you push the shirt thing? You were difficult. You were told, and you had to go and say it in front of Hulk. Oh, and difficult. I was a company, and embarrass I was a company Hulk man. And make Vince embarrass have to embarrass Hulk. Hulk's bitch. That's what embarrassed him, life. Sean. Come on. Had to bring you know the, the call the, attention to the fact that he didn't want to rip the shirt. I still regret not ripping mine, anyways. But Fat Dylan was coming out at this point. That would have been great. Though. It would have been. Yeah. But it, if I would have just ripped mine, he would have looked like a total sleaze. What did you want, muscular Dylan to be coming out of that shirt? Muscular Dylan would have been not great. No, you needed fat Dylan to pop out. 